Welcome to Mose Cybersecurity Institute's YouTube channel. My name is Benjamin Mose and I'm the founder of the Institute. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Yara rules and why they're so powerful and why you should use them. And if you haven't used them, you should really get into it just after you've watched this video. Let me give you some background information, okay? Most adversaries or even pen testers what they do that allows them to win again and again and again is they find out things like what antivirus software you're using, what EDR software you're using, what kind of Windows hardening settings you've turned on. And once they have this information, what they do is they find ways to bypass your controls, evade your detection technology, and it will kind of just operate under the radar, okay? It's called blending in, how they are blending to the environment. Now, here's the thing. Um, they have the advantage. They know in advance what they're going to go against. They're able to anticipate it, find out ways to evade it, and then, only then, do they attack you with custom tools, or payloads that have been obfuscated in a way that they've tested in advance if it's going to work. They'll go and buy the antivirus product you're using, find a way to defeat it, and then attack you with the payload that works. And that's why, however much you spend on cybersecurity, doesn't actually give you the advantage against this, since they know in advance what's going to work and what's not going to work. So, cyber defenders have had to use different strategies to deal with these kind of adversaries. What do we do? Well, we write detection rules that we never make available to the adversaries. And the software that we use to be able to write these rules is Yara. Now, there are plenty of other tools out there that you can use as well. But the great thing with Yara is that it's, you know, it's well supported by VirusTotal. Anybody can write rules. And within a few days of training, your security analysts or cyber defenders can start writing Yara rules and defending the network. So here's how that works. Let's say that uh, um, you know, you've identified an attack campaign against your network. And you've identified a piece of malware that has successfully bypassed your security controls. Okay? Now what do you do? You grab the sample and you write several Yara rules to be able to detect variants of this sample. Okay? And the Yara rules are not things like an MD5 okay, or just a domain name. What you do is you identify parts of the code that you think the adversary will either reuse in other malware samples or that it will be incredibly difficult for them to change over time. They would have to rewrite their malware. Now, here's what happens. You now have built a high fidelity rule to be able to catch the malware sample you've just identified. You run this Yara rule across your fleet of computers, and here's what's going to happen. You're going to identify other computers where maybe an other variant of the malware has been installed. Maybe it's been recompiled, so it doesn't have the same MD5 hash. Maybe it's talking to another host, but it doesn't matter. You'll be able to catch it. What's going to also happen is you may find other pieces of malware that are completely different than the first sample you found because the malware author reused part of the code. Maybe they took you know, they, they wrote a library or some sort of SDK to write their malware. Now you've written a, a, a Yara rule for one of the functions. Every time they reuse that code, you're able to catch them. Okay? And here's the thing. You have two ways that you can use Yara rules. The first way, which is the way that I do not prefer and do not necessarily advise, is that let's say you load the Yara rule in your EDR and your EDR does the hunting for you. The reason why I don't like this is that smart adversaries will try to steal your Yara rules so they can find out how you're detecting them. The smarter way to go about this is you download everything that runs across your endpoint and you make a copy of it in an uh, offline secure computer. Right? 
And now you run your Yara rules against that data set. So in short, what you do is you deny the adversary the ability to know how you're detecting them. And here's what's going to happen. All right, you're going to identify one sample, write a Yara rule for it that will allow you to find other samples across your network. And over time, you're going to build maybe 30, 50 or more Yara rules just for this one group that is constantly trying to attack your network. But they'll never know how you're catching them. And since they can't figure out how you're doing it, it's not as easy for them to be able to adapt their strategy. It's not as easy. They're not getting the feedback as to how they're getting caught. They can't get the Yara rule and running into their own environment and find a way to bypass it. And that's how you would be able to gain some level of advantage over them. And you can take this one step further if you wanted to, is you can take some of your Yara rules, you can put them into various total or other online services, and now what would happen is that if the adversary is attacking another organization in the world that also uploads their files to various total, they may trigger your Yara rule, and that's how you're now able to track adversaries across multiple um, you know, continents and countries, and maybe over time as well. So I hope that you've now understood the power of Yara. And once again, the best blue teamers that I've ever seen in my career all use Yara. Uh, it's incredibly easy to use. And so I'd like to uh, you know, get you on board with it and uh, get you started with writing Yara rules. So I hope you'll get into it. Cheers. Bye-bye.